Hey YouTube, how's it going? Welcome back to my garage. It is awesome to have you guys here. In today's video, I'm actually going to be installing this front splitter here. So as you guys know, I picked up a bunch of parts from Macaw Motorsports. Now, in this video, I'm actually going to start the series with the front splitter installation. Now, if you guys like what you see in this video, I'm going to leave a link of the product in the description below. So taking a closer look at this fender, you can see that the material uh, of the actual base of the splitter is fairly thick. I want to say it's about a quarter of an inch, but as you can see here, these are the actual adjustable components. So this is going to bolt up to the front of the frame rails. And then now this bottom section right here can be adjusted via these four bolts right here. Um, but all that will be explained later in the video. So the hardware on this splitter itself is very, very straightforward. They're just Phillips head and a basic socket set will do to connect the splitter to the bracket and the bracket to the chassis. So if you guys haven't noticed, I started limiting the amount of text that I put into my installation videos, mainly because I realized that as a visual learner myself, it's really cool to just watch a video uh, for the video just to kind of soak all the content in. And then the fact that I could put everything as subtitles in English and you can toggle those as you so please. So if you just wanted to view the video just for entertainment, you can toggle them off. But if you wanted more detail or specific things about the build that I found, if I found any issues, toggle the subtitles on. There's a little bit of a problem here. Okay, so this wouldn't be a problem if my car was not a turbocharged vehicle. So basically, the front bumper is fine, but there's this gap right here. And I know that I said this is adjustable, but I will show you guys exactly what the issue is in a second because I took off the intercooler to better show you guys what the main issue is. So I mocked everything up really quickly. I didn't use any of the lock washers. I mean, it's very straightforward to bolt everything on. The biggest issue is this intercooler piping placement right here. Now, I believe that the issue is caused by the fact that the bracketry that's holding the top of the uh, intercooler that's sitting right there uh, is positioned in a way where the intercooler is actually tilted inwards at the bottom. So that's why the piping naturally wanted to go this way once I sealed everything up but I can still pull these pipes a little bit forward and adjust the silicone couplers just a little bit so that I can pull the intercooler forward. And because this car was in a previous accident, I noticed that the bottom two holes that normally mount this bracket right here uh, with the hardware provided was actually shifted inward. So I think this section was replaced, but the frame rails or the tip or the, or the orientation right here isn't aligned. Um, to the stock specification. So understandably, uh, the holes are misaligned. So I had to drill another one in order to compensate. So I made sure that the hole placement on both sides is pretty much identical. That way this front splitter is actually centered um, along the bottom of the front bumper. All right, so it's getting a little bit late. So I'm gonna take the rest of the night off just to kind of wrap my head around what's the best course of action here. Uh, I'm not gonna let this problem stop me from installing this because I know that this information would be valuable for those of you that have a big intercooler for your Turbo E36 as well. Again, if your E36 is NA, don't even worry about this step. It all bolts on really quickly, but basically this is a mock-up right here. So at the end of the night, I realized that the bottom of my intercooler actually has these stubs that are threaded on the bottom. And then the idea would be that I would rotate the silicone couplers forward just a little bit. And then because of these threaded sections on the bottom of the intercooler, I can actually drill holes on the bottom of the lip after I bolt it back up to the existing hardware um, in order to one, give this lip better um, security. And I'm a little bit worried because my fender liner is terrible, but that will be replaced as soon as possible.
so I'm so excited that I finally got the splitter installed. It looks amazing. Uh, several problems here. I'm gonna have to relocate this again, uh, mainly because once I moved the intercooler forward, there was no room for it to sit in its original placement. But temporarily, I'm just gonna leave it for now. I'm, I don't really mind it just hanging because I'm not planning on driving the car anytime soon. So based on the way this intercooler sits in contrast to the black splitter on the front, I might consider doing a front bash bar in the future. I know that there's a gap still right here, but again, that's mainly because it is bolted now to the bottom of the intercooler. So if I really want to adjust this flush with the bumper, I'm going to have to raise the intercooler up even higher or figure out an alternative way, maybe cut those tabs off the bottom. Other issues are normally you would bolt this bumper up to normal OEM specifications, but I can't do that exactly because of the fender liner that's been rubbed through by the wheels, mainly because it fell off at one point and it just started hitting the wheel on the highway. So the front lip also has these drilled holes uh, along the inner edge of the front lip so that you can attach them to the stock fender liner of your car. Unfortunately, I can't exactly do that because on both sides, the tabs are actually broken off. So that's gonna have to be saved in the same video, tidying up the front lip and tidy up the front end. All right, so I apologize that this video was kind of like half an installation slash half me trying to improvise and figuring out the best way to make this front lip attachment fit on my car around the turbo system. So overall, I'm really happy with the way this looks and the way that I figured out how to actually make everything fit. Um, although I know that I can still make it better over time. But if you guys enjoyed what you're seeing and you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. And then as always, if you like what you see, smash that like button. So big, so big thanks again to Macau Motorsports. Be sure to check them out for other awesome products for your E36. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.